So we're back, part two, uh, before I hit the wrong button on my phone here. Uh, we're looking at our Oregon City layout. As you can see, a Western Maryland freight just went by. About a circa 1972 with one of their old uh, circus painted F7s and a short little local. Yeah, our layout's set in the late 90s, 2000 in Oregon, but I like to run uh, what I saw growing up as a kid. Anyway, I was talking about one of the things I like to do is to um, recreate photos. A later video will show you that, but like Mike's drive in here, I don't have it affixed. I can move it around. The same with the Canby Depot. It can be moved around because I've taken a lot of cool pictures from this point of view using the selfie mode from over here and recreating pictures that we've seen and uh, scenes, photos that I have from the past. So I can move those buildings around. Uh, power for the layout. I've got a couple of the normal Cato power packs. This one here in the, at the uh, L is mainline and covers a few switches right here. I've got a large rail power one to for other uh, mainline power. And then here I've got kind of the track diagram for the Brooklyn Yard and mainline access to it at the yard limit. And this power pack does all the switches for inside Brooklyn Yard. I actually wired them up so that they work. It's kind of nice. They all move around. Uh, the turntable is not powered. It's strictly diorama showing the daylight and that. Um, we look back here, the view for the shelving, supplies. Something that's really neat is I went up after Christmas time and got a bunch of these um, plastic organizers. Uh, Southern Pacific cars, Union Pacific cars, odds and ends. Yeah, I like seeing the S7 go through the neighborhood. Really nice. Uh, my wife got me at Christmas this Micromark work stand, or came from Micromark. It's a work stand with a magnifying glass. Has a magnifier, has a light on it. Makes doing a lot of the little detail work, especially on end scale for somebody my age. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, one of these little plastic parts organizers, if you're starting to do a layout, is invaluable. Uh, you can put in all the little odds and ends, all the little small little pieces. You can see the things I have. Couplers, tie wraps, metal joiners, wire joiners, trucks, little decals, things like that. Uh, I keep my paints in that that I do the, everything in just over here in a little box. And again, more of the plastic organizers. Like if I want to run a, a Southern Crescent, I simply come in here. And here's a Southern Crest inside with some of the FP7s. This gives her storage underneath. And most of the time, I just have the black cloth hanging. And then at Christmas time, she can come down to get her stuff. But it's pretty sturdy. We use the big brackets. And it's just fun to recreate uh, the things we've seen. I don't worry about operation. I don't care if car XYZ123 gets to the mill on time. I could care less. I just like running the trains and taking a look and building this stuff. And it's kind of neat to be able to, you know, you're in your bedroom or the spare bedroom in here, but then with the flick of the camera and the right view, poof, you're in the Oregon Cascades and you're watching the Southern Pacific fight its way up to Cascade Summit. So, uh, like I said, another video, we're going to look at some of the photos that I've taken as both a kid and an adult, and then how I recreated them. My wiring is not the most beautiful, but it's functional. The switches work, and it's uh, kind of the last of our behind the scenes. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, tune in again, and we'll look at how I recreate some of these photos.